Hey guys, welcome back. Hope all of you are doing good. This is your host Devang Sharma. आज की वीडियो में बात करने वाले हैं वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड अ वेरी कॉमनली आस्ट इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन अबाउट जावा सो विदाउट अ फर्दर अडियो लेट्स स्टार्ट द वीडियो हे गाइस लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस टू अ वंडरफुल इनिशिएटिव टेकन बाय न्यूटन स्कूल दिस इनिशिएटिव इज कॉल्ड लॉन्च पैड दिस इज फॉर द पीपल हु वांट टू स्टार्ट कोडिंग फ्रॉम स्क्रैच एंड लर्न द बेसिक्स ऑफ डिफरेंट प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेजेस फॉर एब्सोल्युटली फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट यस I repeat absolutely free of cost. It has plenty of resources available here including courses from Java, Python, Node.js, CPP, React.js and DBMS and SQL management. Also, few of these courses are available in Hindi as well. So what are you waiting for? Applications are open now. Apply today to become a rockstar developer within 6 months. So welcome back to Newton School Launchpad and our complete professional Java series. This is a complete Java series from a freshman to a professional developer. Irrespective of whether you are a freshman or junior developer or a senior developer, you will find something related to you that will help you excel in your career. So, without a further ado, let's start the today's video. Hey guys, welcome back. So, शुरू करते हैं आज की एट वीडियो ऑफ अवर कंप्लीट जावा सीरीज इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इंटरफेसिस इन जावा वे गोइंग टू अबाउट बटर इंटरफेसिस हाउ डू वी डिफाइन इट वट डू वी नीड टू डू डिफाइन इंटरफेसिस हाउ एक्सेप्शन परफॉर्म वाइड एंड लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट मल्टीपल इनहेरिटेंस इसके लिए जावा बहुत ही फेमस है मल्टीपल इनहेरिटेंस नॉट सपोर्ट इन जावा हाउ कैन वी यूज मल्टीपल इनहेरिटेंस यूजिंग इंटरफेसिस इन जावा सो लेट स्टार्ट द वीडियो नंबर वन वट इज इंटरफेस इन जावा An interface in Java is a blueprint of a class, and it's a blueprint. You treat like a map or some structure of a class. Exactly that person interfaces. An interface is a blueprint of a class. It has static constants and abstract methods. Now, when I say abstract methods, we discussed in the last video. In case you have not watched it, the link is in the description. Please watch the video about the abstract class and abstract methods that I've covered in the last class. Interface in Java is a mechanism to achieve abstraction. I have told you in the previous video that there are two methods by which you can achieve abstraction in Java. What was the first method? First was using abstract classes, which may or may not give you complete abstraction. And second was interfaces, which gives you the complete abstraction in Java. Apart from that, there can be only abstract methods in Java interface, not only the body. It is used to achieve abstraction and multiple inheritance in Java. Very, very important. It is used not just to achieve the abstraction, but also the multiple inheritance in Java. In other words, you can say that interfaces can have abstract methods and variables, but it cannot have a method body. extremely important part java interface also represents a is a relationship so if you remember the video where we talked about inheritance versus aggression inheritance has a is a relationship and aggression has a has a relationship so just like inheritance interface also represents a is a relationship apart from that it cannot be extension just like abstract class again if you have not watched the video please do watch the previous video because that is a subsequent video for this here's a two important fact about the java versions java 8 and java 9 Apart when Java 8 was there, since Java 8, we can have default and static methods in the interface. But since the Java 9 has rolled out, we can have private methods in the interface. We are going to learn this about coding, and we'll see a live example. How does it mean in Java 8 and Java 9? To summarize it, let's revise why we you need to use the Java interface. First, to achieve the abstraction. When I'm talking about abstraction, I'm talking about complete abstraction. So in abstract classes, it can be a partial abstraction, it can be a complete abstraction. But in interface, it's always a complete abstraction. second by using interface we can support the functionality of multiple inheritance the problem of multiple inheritance came into picture because from classes ke through multiple inheritance karte hain the only problem that we face is diamond problem the very common diamond problem which is commonly asked in the interview but when we use the interfaces we can overcome that diamond problem and java is able to support the multiple inheritance we are going to see why the code we are going to see this in this video only at the end of the video to check how java is able to support multiple inheritance using the interfaces third and a very important point for senior developers achieve the loose coupling it can be used to achieve the loose coupling now what is my loose coupling i mean if you are working in a large distributed services you always need to make sure that your service architecture is not monolith you have to move the microservice architecture so your microservice architecture should be loosely coupled to each other on the other hand it should not be very loose it should not be tight of course So it should be loosely coupled, and to make sure in sentence, you can define an interface in all other classes to implement the interface. That will provide you to have a loosely coupled architecture in distributed manner. Very important part: how to declare an interface. We have learned about theory. What is an interface? Why it is used? Let's talk about how do we do it. What is the syntax and all? 
So to declare an interface, it is declared by using the keyword interface. Just like in abstract classes, it was the abstract keyword. In interfaces, we have the interface keyword. Again, the same point is coming here. It provides total abstraction. But does total abstraction mean? All the methods in an interface are declared with the empty body. And all the fields are public, static, and final by default. This is what we mean by total abstraction. Apart from that, any class that implements an interface must implement all the methods declared in the interface. This is a crucial point. It is not that it can implement only one method or two methods and skip any of the methods. No. A class that implements the interface, it must implement all the methods declared in the interface. To see the syntax of it, it starts with the keyword interface and then followed by interface name. So there we can have constant fields, we can have methods that are abstract by default. Very, very useful topic. What is the relationship between classes and interface? We have learned about classes, we have been learning about classes when we started with Java series. Now we have learned with a new topic called interface. So what is the relationship between the two? What is the relationship between a class and an interface? A class can extend another class, an interface can extend another interface, but a class implements an interface. That's the difference. As you can see in the diagram, one class extends another class, one interface extends another interface, but a class implements an interface. Now let's try to answer the question, the very popular question that has been coming up and has been popping up since the first second of this video. So if a class is able to implement the multiple inheritance, right? How we are able to do multiple inheritance via the interfaces? Next, we are going to see via code as well. But before that, what does multiple inheritance here mean? So if a class implements multiple interfaces or an interface extends multiple interfaces, it is known as multiple inheritance. As you can see in the diagram, this class implements two interfaces and this interface extends two interfaces, right? So in this case, it is called a multiple inheritance in Java. We are going to see via live coding what is the interface and how can I can implement it. So, hello code code. So, as you can see, I have a Newton School ID with me, which has multiple languages supported here. And there you can see the input, output, messages, and standard input output. And there is error message as well. Let's start the coding to understand what is an interface. And the next part will code how multiple items are supported by the interface. So, this is the first part where we are going to learn about interface and how do we use it. So, in the last example, in the last video, we have seen the abstract classes in the class where we have two classes, BMW and Mercedes. We will carry the same example and carry forward karenge, and let's try to understand what's the difference between an abstract class and an interface. We define an interface car, it is the syntax, keyword is interface, and then we have the interface name, which is car. So, let me declare a function here, void run. Again, this is an abstract method. Why it is an abstract method? Because it does not have any of the implementation, right? When last video we covered what does abstract method means, what does abstract classes mean? Just to remind it, this is an abstract method. Now what I do is, I create a class, let's say a class type is BMW, and this class actually implements, or there will not be extend, because a class extends another class, but one class implements the interface. So, this will implement the interface part. Okay, so class BMW will implement the interface part. Now what we are going to do is, we are going to provide the implementation here in this class, which has actually implemented the interface. The class for done, and here I can print something like. This is BMW. Okay, this is fine. Next what we can do is, let's make another class. Let's make another class, which implements the same interface. So, BMW we have covered, let's cover the Audi. And we can just reuse the same code. And instead of a BMW, this will be a Audi. Okay. So, we have two classes, which is actually using the one interface, and the interface name is car, and there are two classes that are using this. First is a BMW and second is the Audi. Let's do one thing. Let's define our public class. Public class main. So here I will define public static over main. Okay. Let me create an object car obj equal to new. And let's make it of type Audi. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
call TikTok. Okay, so what I have done is there are two classes BMW and Audi, and there's one interface car. And these two classes BMW and the Audi, they're actually implementing the interface car. What I do in my main method is I create an object of type car, which is of basically of type Audi, which is implemented by the interface car, and it is and I call the function run. So what should be my output? My output should be when I create an object of this kind and call the function run, my output should be line number 18, which is this is all. Let's see our output. Let's click on run. Correct. This is Audi. Let's take another example. So instead of creating a type Audi, what I do is I make it of type BMW. What should be the output now? Correct. This is the output. This is BMW. So we have only one interface which is implemented by two different classes and based upon how it is implemented, we can use both the classes of this same interface. That is what the use case of interface is. Let's go back to our series. So we have understood the example of interface here. Now, last but not the least, very, very important topic, a very important question that is generally asked. Since multiple inheritance is not supported through classes in Java, how it is possible by using an interface? First question is how it is supported and second is why it is supported. Then two questions are equally important. See, to answer this honestly, multiple inheritance is not supported in class because of diamond problem. And why does diamond problem arise? Why does diamond problem arise in the first case? Diamond problem arises because of the ambiguity. The class is not able to clearly understand which function they're calling. Is it the previous class, is it the base class, or is it the parent class, right? But because of that ambiguity, a diamond problem comes into the picture. But in case of inter interfaces, in case of interfaces, it's not the same. It is supported in case of an interface because there is no ambiguity there. There is absolutely no ambiguity there. So the implementation is provided by the implementation class. The implementation is not part of the interface. So that is why when you define by the implementation class, there is no ambiguity at all. Let's see this example and how we can support multiple inheritance using interfaces in Java. So we are back to our ID and this time we are going to see an example how we can support multiple inheritance in Java using the interface. I will delete all this code. Let me reset the code first. And let me create an interface. Let's say my interface name is printable. So in my interface, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name a function print. Again, this is an abstract method. I choose another interface, another interface, name it as showable. And I make a method here with the same name print. Remember, if these were been classes, if these were been classes, there will be ambiguity. Are we talking about this print or are we talking about this print? And that is what actually causes the diamond problem. But in case of interfaces, let's see what has actually changed and why there is no problem or why there is no ambiguity. So what I do is I click that class test. And this class test will implement both printable and showable. As you can see, this is multiple inheritance. This is where multiple inheritance comes into picture and we are able to implement the back interfaces. Okay, now let's implement printable and showable. Let me define a function here, public void. Multiple inheritance example. Okay, now let's call it using the main method. So for that, I will need a public class main. In that, I can define it an object of type. Right, and using that object, I can call the method. Right. 
Machine learning output, machine learning output. So we have two interfaces. One is printable, one is showable. Both have the same method print. If it were classes, I repeat, if it were classes, class printable, class showable, and I have class test with me, uh, extends printable and showable, this would have actually created me an error. This error is called diamond problem. What would this error will be? The class will not know whether the print is from showable class or the printable class. That is why multiple inheritance is not supported in Java using classes. But what we are studying, we are not studying classes, we are studying interfaces. So if you see carefully, the definition of the print or the actual implementation of the print is not given in the interface. It is given in the classes only. That is why this code will run successfully and there is no ambiguity at all. Let's try to run this code. See, the program has run successfully. Multiple inheritance example. So this is the example by which you can see how we can support multiple inheritance in Java using the interfaces, which is not possible within the classes. So we have seen both the examples using coding. We have understood how the interfaces work. We have seen via code. Then we have answered the very important question, why multiple inheritance is supported using interfaces, but it is not supported using the classes. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe it and do watch all the videos in the series in progression to have a better understanding for freshman to professional developer. Feel free to share it with your friends and comment down what is the best part that you like and what else you want me to improve. Till then, see you in the next video. Thank you.